Hey everybody, I think I'm actually on here live. <laughs> I was not necessarily planning on making this video, but I got a fun surprise in the mail yesterday and I just needed to share it with somebody because all of you fiber people know, even though <laughs> my husband and children are very sweet and they do uh, pretend like they're excited about things like this when they come in the mail, but they're just, they're not going to be as excited as other fiber people. And I work at home <laughs> as most of you know. So uh, here I am online to share my uh, fiber goodies with you. So anyhow, long story short, I ordered a bunch of stuff that is going to be used for either personal enjoyment <laughs> or um, some of our subscriptions. I got some fiber blending things as well as some really cool rovings from my friend Ashley Martineau, who uh, she has a big YouTube channel on here, like I think a whole bunch more subscribers than I have. So most of you, if you know me, you probably already know her. But Ashley Martineau has a great online uh, shop, uh, Nuvio. And I hope that I'm saying that right. Um, and the link is on here somewhere. So anyhow, you can probably find the link. But she has her book, um, ready-made things, uh, yarns, sweaters. But also, and what I bought was a bunch of, I think she's calling it like the Fiber Arts Apothecary, which is a uh, <laughs> really fun blending things or things called a uh, hand-pulled braids, which maybe other people are doing, but I had not, I personally wasn't doing them in my shop and I hadn't seen them anywhere else. So I thought they were really cool. So I wanted to show them to you. So let me make sure I have all my things here first. Okay. Up first was, and she did not ask me to do this at all. She actually doesn't know that I'm doing this. So uh, hi, Ashley, if you end up <laughs> seeing this video, I just thought so much of this was just cool that uh, we hadn't had before for like our blending. And so these were, and I'm going to be trying to read off of a uh, other website so I can not sound stupid when I tell you things. Let's find what I'm looking for. I lost what I was looking for. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to try to be smart and remember this. Kapok, which is apparently this really awesome fluffy plant fiber. And I got it in a few different colors. It's all laying around all over here. But apparently it is like fluffy seed pod fluff from a tree in the rainforest that I believe started with C. And I think it might have been the cassia tree, but I also might be making that up. And uh, I don't know, dyeing, I am primarily not a dyer, but I know trying to dye plant fibers can be a pain in the butt. So I was very excited to be able to buy these from her already died and it literally looks like the stuff you would get if you were in like the Dr. Seuss book, the Lorax and like from the truffle tree. This is what my imagination of what the truffle tree would have had. So the fact that it is actually a seed pod um, from a rainforest tree, I thought was really fun. So I've got these different colors. My plans for this stuff is to go in textured bats. So these will probably end up, and here's a purple, a purpley blue. These are going to end up uh, between my fiber studio, and then I will reluctantly send it out to some of the uh, Crafty Housewife Yarns fiber blending uh, our team members, because I am not the primary fiber blender. So I guess I do need to share this cool stuff and send it to Heidi and Jennifer. And so these will be getting incorporated into... I would say either our Lux or Natural Bats, because it could go either way. So uh, that was my plan for this, like I said, besides personal excitement, was uh, to spin them in, and I'll do a video, of course, um, into some of our Natural or Lux Bats that I either sell one-off on my site or primarily our subscriptions, because we work really hard to have you know, cool supplies like this in our bats that are you know, from local, you know, American fiber artist. So since Ashley definitely qualifies as one of those, I was excited about incorporating her, uh, some of these cool fiber apothecary things into some of our bats, which funny, she, Ashley's actually gets our fiber artist design bundle. So like I said, she had no clue I'm making this video. it would be really funny because we're going to use some of her supplies, blend them into bats and then send them back to her. So I will be uh, happy to see what she thinks of them. So like I said, these were three of the colors that I'd gotten. 
do do and that is K-pop. And you can Google that or go on her site and read more about it. I thought I'd been smart and left it pulled up, but I guess I had closed the window. So I will just show them to you. So that is thing number one that I'm excited about. I also have this giant bag of rainbow, like, faux or vegan silk. So it is, like, Raylon naps, but the colors I was just all about. And I have my white light on so that the colors are hopefully true to what they would look like in person <laughs> on the video screen. But these I'm also going to use. They are longer fibers because they are, um, like I said, kind of a faux silk. They look like bamboo. It's what they remind me of, like the banana fiber or bamboo fibers. These could honestly, because they hang in long locks, be spun as like kind of a weird, like funky art yarn. I might actually try that. Um, I had gotten these once again, primarily for blending into bats. And so I will be dividing these colors up and I've gotten several bags, sending them out to our fiber blending department. But like I said, that came from, these all came from Ashley's website, but I just loved the colors. They looked like a painting to me, like an oil painting. So I just had to have those. So like I said, I'm really just showing you my stash because I needed someone to be excited about this with me. And also, if you are in the market for, I needed some new, this was the primary reason I was on her site ordering stuff was I'd totally run out of locks. So I got like four bags, I think, full of these hand dyed, like different fibers of locks and uh, wool from different wool breeds. And I just love, I mean, they're so cool just in the bag which I wish I had. There you go. I have to try to hold it that way. <laughs> I, can't, I don't have enough hands, but I just I said you can see, and I am not an expert on being able to identify the different, like, oh, that's from this breed sheep. Like, I know many people are. I have to, I still have to get the book and look it up. But I just loved these long ones that still have the, uh, you know, real integrity of the curl. We've got some longer ones. We've got these little crimpy ones that looks like a merino. And I just love the, uh, hope you can see that, the natural crimp in there. So like I said, I'm just super excited. It's like a Christmas bag to just dig through and get all the different textures of wool and, the, and then blend them into uh, your boxes. And there's definitely some that you see down here that are more natural gray colored. There we go. So it's like they are dyed, but they're not like crazy rainbow colors necessarily like this beautiful wrap I have back here. Because y'all know that I love the crazy rainbow colors as much as more of the like muted naturals. So that's got a bunch of wool locks. And like I said, they just come in these bags. They're like grab bags, 12 ounces. And that's your card, lamb locks. So that is that. And let's see. Other things I was excited about. I've got them all piled up on my desk. She has these really cool braids that I'd gotten. And I'm either going to spin this and keep it for myself. Or they may end up getting spun and uh, put in with our hand spun yarn subscription. So this will either be yarn for me or a uh, yarn that could go out to somebody else. Depending on my mood and how attached I am to it personally afterwards. But... These rovings are really cool. And I mean, of course, like I said, y'all know I sell rovings. So, you know, they have to be cool for me to actually buy a roving because, you know, it's my job to have them made. But these are hand-pulled rovings, which was something different than what we currently sell and I thought was really cool. So they're kind of watercolor dyed in strips and I didn't do it, so I can't totally speak to it. But you can see when you unbraid them, let me unbraid it some, they are in small kind of pencil roving sections. So I'm thinking that's what she meant, which is great because it's already kind of like pre-drafted. It looks um, in these neat color blends for the hand-pulled roving. So like I said, I did not dye them, so I cannot totally speak to how they happen. Yeah, they're so cool. But um, it was definitely, I got these because it was something different than what I had and what we offer. 
I love them, so I may twist Ashley's arm and see if I can't somehow work out some sort of collaboration, because I just really, really like these, and it's a really cool idea. But in the meantime, go to her website, and she has some more of these. They are, I believe most of them were either churro wool, which is more, she likes to use the lesser popular, a little bit rougher wools, even though this is very soft. I would wear this as a scarf but more of the long wool breeds. And this one I think was, it doesn't have a specific breed. So I think it was a mix. And Ashley, if you're seeing this later and you want to comment below what it is, it was a mix of like heritage, small farm wools, which is kind of her jam. And one of the many reasons we're friends because we have that in common. So hand pulled roving, got that one. And I got this one, which has got a little bit more orange in it. And, you know, I live in Tennessee in Knoxville, so this is like Tennessee Vols orange. And I wasn't as into the shade of orange before we moved here, but uh, <laughs> I have since been corrupted. So I have like a purse that color, and I just really, I loved the combination of the cool colors with the warm colors. And like, so this one, I'm not even sure. I literally just bought it because it was cool. And I really wanted to play around with this whole hand-pulled roving situation because I've never done that before. So that'll be fun for me. And could end up in our handspun yarn subscription. So I got that one. And last but not least, the one I thought was the most cool. And I've got stuff stacking up all over the place. This one is a really big braid. This one is also one of her hand-pulled rovings. You can see it says that on the tag. But what's really cool about this one is this, y'all, this is like a bat, but roving. And I'd never... Never seen this. So like I said, if somebody else is like super well known for this and I live under a rock and somehow it, that escaped me, um, then apologies to them. But if not, this was the first place I'd ever seen sort of like a bat, but in roving form. And I am super excited about spinning this one just for experiment sake. So this looks like a cool blend of, like I said, the pulled rovings. There's glitter in it, because I know she has, like, glitter sprays, so there's, like, sequins and glitter and locks, and like I said, this is really my first time. They came in the mail yesterday, so I haven't really gotten to play around with it, but look at all, and you can see the glitter that she's, like, sprayed in it, so it kind of sticks, and that's, like, silk. That's, like, a bamboo silk there. We got, like, some wool or cotton neps in there, but this was just the most, and then locks down in here. I mean, this is literally just an adventure in braid form, and I'm really excited about spinning it. I have no clue how it's going to turn out, and I have no clue how I'm going to spin it, but I'm going to stare at it. I'm going to think about it, and I'm probably going to spin it kind of loose and woolen, and this is a perfect segue to I wanted to um, do, I think I'm calling it, let's have some fun already for part, uh, like just kind of, I don't know, I guess it could be if you were a newer spinner or just somebody that spins very traditional yarns, more of a course or a little mini lessons, but I'm going to be doing on, I'm undecided. I'm either going to stream it on Facebook or I'm going to stream it here. So comment here if you have opinions on that. We have a really pop-in Facebook group, so I tend to, re to do live stuff there and then share it on YouTube or make it shareable later and email it out to people. I'm not quite sure. But basically, I'm just tired of everything. Uh, you know, this year's been it's been a wacky year. It's 2022, if you're watching this much later. It's been a wacky year, and I'm just kind of tired of, uh, you know, everything being so heavy. So I was like, let's do, I'm going to do a four-part mini, like a different lesson each day, starting on the 26th. And here, I even wrote down what I'm doing. So let's see, day one. I plan on, of course, this is subject to change, but this is the plan and it's even written down. I have, I'm going to do how to blend uh, textured roll logs on a blending board. So if you don't have any spinning supplies, I have a blog on how to make your own blending board and a video. It's on here. So the idea being, if you are excited about it, you could do that, you know, for not too much money. So we're going to try to make some really fun textured roll logs. I'm going to continue that on day two with, if you have a drum carter, and uh, I was inspired by my friend Christina Mossad. 
She likes to do the big, um, like giant roll logs where you like run it through a drum carter. And then instead of taking it off as a bat, you roll it off into like a big, it looks like a giant cartoon cigar. So I hadn't done, I've done a few of those, but I haven't done too many. So I thought that would be fun. Basically, if you can't tell, I picked lots of things that I personally thought would be fun and I'm going to go live and I'm going to do it. And hopefully, you know, you find it fun and maybe I make mistakes and then you don't have to make those mistakes. And then that'll be fun for you too. Day three, I was going to do, I'm working on a chain ply. So I'm spinning a braid from the fold. So we'll go over spinning from the fold um, to keep the color sections. And then I'm going to do a slightly thick and thin yarn because that's how I spin. And then I'm going to chain ply it. So it should come out really cool and we'll cover two different kind of lesser done things. Chain ply and spinning from the fold. So that'll be day three. And day four, I'm going to spin this thing. <laughs> so if you want to see this thing get spun up, um, not entirely because I'm not going to go live for, you know, the whole day. But I'm definitely going to start spinning this and we're going to see how it turns out. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So let me know. <laughs> That'll be day four. If you want more information on that, like I said, I'm still, it is next week. And I am still kind of thinking about the best way to do it. It will most likely be live in our Facebook group because that's where I feel like most people get notifications and hang out uh, more so here. And then it'll be shareable. So if you, I know we're all busy and I'm going to do this during the day because like that's when like right now is when all my family is not in the house and I can actually do things. So I know it's more fun. I used to do the gin and spins on here and they were at night um, and I would drink gin, which was great. And I'd spin yarn. And I love that in theory, but in practice, it was hard because that's when my kids are home. That's when my husband's home. And honestly, that's when I want to hang out. That's when I want to hang out with my family. And, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not as chatty at night, I guess. So for me, it's better for me to do creative sort of work related video things during the day. So I'm going to do it during the day live. I will screen record and we'll send out the, uh, little lessons in replays. So if you want those replays, since they will not be on YouTube, um, you will want to go to, and there's a link wherever it is that there's a link. It's basically just my website, craftyhousewifeyarns.com. So that's not like a complicated link. You will see a little video ad that's like, let's have some fun, fiber lessons, and a little place to put your email. If you put your email there, you will get details on like what we're doing what day, um, the replays for sure. If I get any sort of coupons or goodies, maybe from Ashley, maybe from somebody else or, you know, the different suppliers, um, you know, you may get coupons. I like coupons. I'm sure I'll make some coupons. So anyhow, go click over there and sign up for that. That is next week. So if you are seeing this video like three years from now, I'm sorry you missed it, but you should probably still go to my website. I probably have something cool going on three years from now. And I will probably have this, uh, I'll send out the lessons in some sort of more evergreen way in the future, but who knows, who knows? So in the meantime, go put your email. Like I said, you'll see a little video on my webpage. That's like, let's have some fun video series. And I will be spinning this on day four <laughs> as well as the other things I mentioned. So just for, uh, you know, the itinerary and replays, go sign up there. And that way I can email it just to the people that want it. And we will be excited about spinning this thing. Anyhow, awesome stuff, Ashley. I'm really excited. Please go visit her shop and get your own because I clearly am just going to keep buying more of them and then you won't get any. So <laughs> hope you have a good day. I have to get back to answering emails and that sort of thing. So have a good one.